Welcome to Sam Conversation, an online program of South Asia Monitor. Today we're going to discuss a very interesting and well-researched book, Jammu and Kashmir, The Wounded Paradise, by Mr. Jawaharlal Kaul, a very senior, experienced journalist. It's not easy to write about Jammu Kashmir because it's a very complex subject and it's a region where so much has happened which did not come into public notice. A lot of what happened just before independence and after is um, not, uh, not, you know, it's not been disclosed. His book is worth reading to come to know what happened for seven decades after independence. Um, I'll just give you a brief look at the chapters. The birds will come home to roost to protect the empire of the caliph, the musketeers in the valley of saints, a young man in a fez cap, Abdullah, who wanted to be a sheikh, Abdul Qadir Khan, a man without a past or future, birth of the national conference, the new name for the old game. Sheikh in the cobweb, transborder terrorism. A session deliberately delayed the game of political blackmail. The invasion by Pakistan in defense of the enemy. The great Gilgit game. The game is still on. Kashmir under Abdullah. Five steps to dismissal. The terror crawls in. A thousand wounds war. As former Pakistani president, tin pot president, General Ziaul Haq had promised to inflict a thousand wo inflict a thousand wounds war on India, because conventional war against India, they could never win. The 14th chapter is the victims, wounded Kashmir and Kashmiriyat. 15th, birth and death of Article 370. 16th, let us rebuild our new paradise. 17th, and the last chapter, the postscript. Um, this book becomes far more, uh, uh, assumes far more importance and relevance after the release of the film, The Kashmir Files. Um, Gupta Sahib, kya aap pehle batayenge ke aapko is kitab likhne ki inspiration kaise aai? <coughs> मैं जम्मू कश्मीर राज्य के एक बहुत दूर के एक कस्बे में पैदा हुआ जिसका नाम स्कर्दू है स्कर्दू बल्तिस्तान का एक बड़ा कस्बा माना जाता है जी yeah. मेरा मेरी शिक्षा शुरू हुई है मुजफ्फराबाद में जो आजाद कश्मीर की राजधानी है uh -huh. और मेरा प्राइमरी स्कूल तक मेरी शिक्षा लेह में हुई लद्दाख में uh -huh. मूलता शुड़े टॉक इन इंग्लिश 
जैसे भी जैसे भी बाई ऑल मीन्स विच एवे वी कैन कंटिन्यू इन बोथ लैंग्वेजेस विच एवे वे यू कम टू बट माई फेमिली बिलोंग टू एन विलेज नियर श्रीनगर ऑन द बैंक ऑफ एम मानस बल लेक मानस बल लेक लेक मानस बल लेक जम्मू कश्मीर फॉर लास्ट थ्री टू थर्ड ऑफ देंचुरी i was part not only of the um, political game but it is economic game it is cultural life and it is muddy streets of srinagar which are still muddy so i was not uh, interested in writing a book because i was afraid that i may be accused of partisanship i may be i may be because i am the part of what has happened in the world kashmir i belong yeah. i belong to it although when i came to delhi to become a journalist i was still connected with jammu and kashmir and it was my duty to report the progress or any other uh, situation in jammu and kashmir i had to go to kashmir frequently meet with people those whom i knew those whom i didn't knew and i had to make new acquaintances i think i must have written about a thousand articles about kashmir during all these years but still i was not tempted to write a book still i wrote a book it was because a simple incident in uh in my life prompted me write, to write a book i was afraid that jammu and kashmir is suffering from ailments which are not curable by simple political solutions or even military solutions something very seriously was wrong in jnk i was one day in this flat of mine in dom in delhi Then a young man visited from Kashmir, Kashmir village. Where, where did you say? I stay here in Dwarka. I stayed in in Dwarka in my Dwarka flat. A young I man. I see. I see. Hmm. A, a young man came to meet me. He was from a very remote village in Jammu and Kashmir. Somebody had recommended him to meet me and okay. he was a usual visitor now but one day he was sad i asked him the reason he said that his cousin is dying because of the drug addiction dying because of drug addiction drug oh. drugs drugs drug addiction drug drug addictions I I told him why don't you take him to to an um, rehabilitation center, a hospital. He he said the young man, young patient, does not go to go to any hospital. He threatens to kill himself if I if we move him from the house. 
and he is slowly dying in front of his old parents. I was uh, shocked because uh, in such a situation, this Kashmiri society was suffering from an enemy far bigger than Pakistan or any other. It was slowly creeping in the young men of the Jammu and Kashmir. It is still creeping. Wow. And when I started inquiring about it, when he started researching about it, I was shocked that Jammu and Kashmir has, it has become, has achieved the top position in drug addictions and drug mm, sale in India, surpassing Punjab and other states. This was in which year, Khol Sahib? This uh, uh, JNK is still um, ahead of all others. No, no, this incident about this, you know, the, uh, the three onset of drug addiction, uh, 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 you are referring to uh, which years? About three or four years ago. I see, I see. Recently, it is not very, very old. I read the document prepared by the Health Ministry of Jammu and Kashmir. It says that Jammu Kashmir has unfortunately become a drug heaven, heaven. and it is this uh, drug addiction is an emergency, a medical emergency for the state. It's an epidemic. Uh, if I again, may, yes, yes, yes. Again, I found other victims of this situation. When you say victims of this uh, gun culture and other things and terrorism, I don't actually mean people or communities or communal um, situation. The second victim, apart from the youth who are, who are uh, suffering from the drug addiction and uh, um, the other thing was the forest itself. The loss of the forest uh, cover in Jammu and Kashmir has been alarming for the last two, uh, two decades. It is so alarming they, um, that many plants, which used to be a common um, scene in uh, JNK forests, yes, are, no yes. are no longer there. They have vanished. Many streams have lost, uh, are lost to us. There are thousands of small springs which do not exist now, which existed only two or three decades ago, but not now. They have vanished. Many animals and some flowers and insects are no longer there. One of the most important uh, bird, known as Katij in Kashmir, swallow, Katij, Katij. Swallow, swallow. Katij in Kashmir, uh, in English we call, we call it swallow. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a small bird. Yes. That, uh, that, these birds came in millions every year, flocked in um, Jammu and Kashmir, and resided in uh, rural areas of Kashmir, in houses of the people, because they make their nests in small crevices of the houses, in thick, um, uh, in, in uh, roof towns and everything. Um. So they were friendly, friendly um, birds to the people. Not only that, because they were always uh, singing something. Um, and this singing, I, I, get your, 
I, I, if I may stop you here, I get your point very poignantly. You put across the the uh, you know scourge of drug addiction and the ecological degradation. But I, you know, there's so much in your book which is about the de the 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 all the atrocities that uh, you know occurred and how how the Kashmiri pundits were driven out of uh, this uh, the Jam uh, of Jammu and Kashmir, particularly the Kashmir Valley, uh, it, uh, with with this uh, recent movie that has uh, come out, the Kashmir Files. Uh, there are there are opinions saying that all this is propaganda. I don't think so. As a writer, I too have researched been researching on Kashmir for the last thirty years. Uh, I don't think that is propaganda. Would you throw some light on on the the, the way the the you know the non Kashmiri Muslims uh, um, suffered? Yes, it's a it's a it was a great tragedy. As far as Kashmir is concerned, and but it is not a sudden event. The atmosphere for such an Holocaust was uh, created and developed for years before Sheikh Abdullah came to power. Before 47, uh, in 30s or even 20s, two people, two leaders of the Indian uh, Muslim were interested in Ramon Kashmir. One was Elama Iqbal, Muhammad Iqbal, Sad Muhammad yes. Iqbal. Yes, yes. Who, who was, who, who after returning from London has turned radical, radical Islamists. And uh, was president of the Muslim League of Punjab. Punjab Muslim, he was the head of the Punjab Muslim League. He had a uh, notion that Muslims need a corridor from Jammu and Kashmir to West Asia, through Afghanistan. If there's a Muslim state, a great Muslim state, Muslim majority state, merging Punjab merging um, uh, Sindh and Balochistan and Northwest Frontier and Jammu and Kashmir with Punjab, making a greater Punjab Muslim corridor. It will be automatically a corridor, Muslim corridor from Kashmir to say Middle East. And uh, uh, actually this was the origin of the concept of Pakistan. Before, before Jinnah actually gave the con concept, it was Iqbal who uh, provided a philosophical or political uh, platform for it. He wanted a movement against Maharaja and uh, uh, Maharaja was, was uh, considered to be a hindrance in this project. If there's Maharaja, Maharaja, in those days, um, all the states were uh, internally independent, independent of the central um, British government. So Maharaja had to be ousted. A movement had to be created in, in Jammu and Kashmir against him so that uh, this corridor can be created. Iqbal had, uh, Iqbal's political view were, was that democracy and secularism are shrouds for Islam. He says they are shrouds for Islam because Islam cannot survive in these doctrines. It may be all right for Hindus because they don't probably don't mind if, if somebody calls them secular or democratic, but it will be difficult for Muslims. That's what Iqbal does here. Given this uh, philosophy, whatever you create will be fundamentally um, 
violent, fundamentally communist. Second leader who was interested in Kashmir was Bashiruddin Mahmood, Mirza Bashiruddin Mahmood, who was the chief of Amriya sect. He realized... The full form, please. Huh? The full form. Amriya, Jamaatis Amriya. Amriya sect. Amdia, Amdia sect, yes, yes, yes. Amdia, Amdia sect believed uh, that after Muhammad, there will be a prophet who will be Amdia, Amdia. This was not possible for um, Sunni Muslim to accept, especially in Punjab. This was an unacceptable um, doc doctrine. They would rise in, up with arms against Amdias. So, Bashiruddin um, thought that Kashmir will be the right place to begin with, uh, with this new sect, new Islamic sect, because he, he had heard that Kashmiris are, are sober, they are, they, are, they are willing to accept um, many doctrines without any resistance. But when his um, emissaries went to Srinagar to make um, inquiry, they found that, that Kashmiri Muslims are not as volatile. They are not as uh, hostile. They are not as fundamental as other parts of uh, other um, Muslims of India. His emissary, his friends told him, Mirza Sahib, uh, agar aapko Hindu or Muslimano ki asliyat aur unke aap se rishto ko dekhna hai to dargah mein jaiye dargahon ke urs mein jaiye aur dekhiye ki kaise kande se kande milakar dono ek hi cheez karte hain kaise aisi aisi rasumat hoti hain unke haan jinko Islam mein mana kiya gaya hai तो उनको आप उनके आधार पर आप कैसे अपने मजहब को आगे बढ़ा सकते हैं? But uh, Bashiruddin was clever, intelligent person. He said it is a challenge. Let us first teach Kashmiri Muslims what actually they should do. And uh, fundamentalism was introduced first time in twenties in Jammu and Kashmir where Muslims started knowing, understanding how different they are from him. Otherwise, they were not. In my childhood, we, we used to go to uh, Khir Bhavani. It's a, a um, place, a, a, a pilgrim place. For yes, Muslims. yes, Khir Bhavani. Uh, uh, I, very, we, venerated, very venerated we, uh, we, place. We used to hire a boat. The boatmen uh, accompanied the uh, pilgrims to Khir Bhavani, remained there for, a, for two nights and came back with them. But during all these three days, they will not eat anything which was taboo to the Kashmir fungus. For instance, they would not go for uh, piaz and lesson. They would not eat, eat any non-vegetarian food. For a respect, as a respect to their pilgrims and their beaches. That type of people, uh, people were there. But now we changed. Madrasas came up and uh, new radical Islam started creeping in, in the rural areas. Where, where did the new radical Islam come from? From the I mean, uh, no, uh, MDR uh, and who, who, who gave it? Who gave it impetus, sir? As I told you, um, when um, Bashiruddin Ahmad Mahmood, the Ahmadiyya chief, started propagating his religion, he first started that all Muslims should Muslim be first. So a uh, new madrasas were started. They had a lot of money. They uh, provided funds for madrasas and uh, 
in rural areas, um, many uh, such uh, school fund, uh, schools taught fundamentalism to the Kashmiri youth and young people. It was at that time when Sheikh Ubdullah came from Alicante. Sheikh Abdullah yeah. did not did Sheikh Abdullah did not start this communal frenzy in the beginning because he, did, he was not there. Sheikh Abdullah found that the, he had already built in the platform. MDRs adopted him. They provided him him the money. They provided him the platform. They provided him the legal uh, assistance because MDR had many good legal lawyers with them. And that's how the Kashmiri, Kashmiri movement, which I believe was uh, anti-Maharaja, but not anti-Hindu in the beginning. In fact, I say, I have uh, said it somewhere in the book or otherwise. Kashmiri people were late comers in that movement. It was started by Punjabi Muslims and uh, um, from Muslims from UP, uh, Ahmadiyas, and mostly Punjabi Muslims. When, uh, when you say Punjabi Muslims, uh, call I mean, Abhigabal. No, but I mean, Punjabi Iqbal. Muslims, major, majority of them or all of them are in Pakistan, West Pakistan. But, but they went to Pakistan, of course, they should, they will, they will go to Pakistan. Um, I, you see, uh, Iqbal was a Punjabi, although he yes. claimed that he, yes. he, was, he was Kashmiri Pandit. He says he was a, his core father, so it's Kashmiri Pandit, Saproot. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, uh, unfortunately for him, nobody know, knew him in Kashmir. Therefore, he had no um, uh, he had no platform to um, preach his uh, doctrine. Bashir Uddin Ahmad was clever enough. He, he realized it. He was a friend of Iqbal. He went to the Iqbal and told him, look here, you don't have any platform there to talk about. I will provide you the platform. You give me the, me the cover in the whole rest of it. Um, call sir, I will um, request you to uh, stop here because we we now have not much time. So let's cover very very quickly uh, two or three aspects. Um, the, the, when you you you've spoken about uh, uh, Sheikh Abdullah. Now between the Abdullahs of the National Conference. And the Muftis of the PDP, um, my observation is that, um, as, as my research says, that they allowed a lot of the atrocities to happen. It, it was, it was a sort of a double game they were playing. Um, is that so? Yes, yes. You are right. Sheikh, I, as I, I was just talking about it. Sheikh Abdullah acquired the communalism from his friends. He, when he yeah. came to Kashmir, Kashmir, he probably did not have that type of mentality. But soon he acquired that mentality. Yeah. Because uh, the first time in, uh, um, in 31, 1931, there was, an, um, there was riots in uh, Srinagar city. Rights were because of the, the um, shape, uh, uh, when um, agitators invaded central jail to oust some of the uh, detainees. They were fired upon. Some people were dead. Those dead, dead were carried out. Um, the processions of those dead people were carried on from Srinagar, from Mohalla to Mohalla. There was an there were rights, communal rights. Communal rights were directed at Hindu families, both Hindu Kashmiri Pandits okay, okay. and 
and the Punjabi traders in Maharaj Ganj. Maharaj Ganj is a, was in Srinagar, it was a um, big wholesale mandi of the um, uh, eatables, foodstuffs and masalas and everything. They're mostly shops belong to the Punjabi, Punjabis, Hindus. And uh, uh, Punjabi Hindus and Kashmiri Pandits both were targeted. Sheikh Abdullah was there outside, not in okay, jail. Now... He did not intervene. He did not okay. intervene in, in, oh. to stop his work. To, to stop this. Now, uh, call up the next most important thing which you started with, this drug addiction uh, amongst youth. The, it, over the years that terrorism flourished in uh, Kashmir, one great one great um, target of them was education, schools. The, look at the amount of schools that were destroyed. Now, the drug addiction, was, was, it, was it part of, connected to that? Yes, of course. Uh, reports that um, um, of uh, researchers about the drug addiction, causes of drug addiction, have revealed that every drug addict had a violent past. Oh. Many of them were fair stone throwers. Many of them ha had been in, in uh, active terrorism. Many of them belonged to the families where at least one person was a terrorist. It is uh, psychologically, youth who have been looking up, who have, who have been fighting this uh, army and uh, um, government agencies for some uh, some dream, which probably no intelligent man would accept, or uh, which never was. They they were they. Uh, Realize soon that they have failed. Their parents um, have failed. Uh, Their grand, great grandfathers have failed. After failure for several several generations, a young man does not understand what to do. Drug addiction is one of the symptoms of disillusionment. You see, uh, uh, hopelessness. On, on hopelessness. the one hand, Gonsam. On the one hand, they destroyed education. On the other hand, they they corrupted youth so badly they radicalized them, which is why yeah. we had such long years of you know all this stone stone because, building. Because when you when, because when you morally de, um, destroy a young man, you can use him for any mm. wrong mm. purpose. That's what and, has happened. And how many how many what kind of a figure can you put on the number of pundits who were killed and who had to leave the valley? Briefly, please. I, when this anti-Hindu agitation started in Jagmohan's time, Jagmohan was a uh, yes. governor then. I went as a reporter, I went to, um, to Srinagar because uh, some of the small um, mandirs along the highway were all damaged or idols broken, multi and totally dead. I, I went to Srinagar. I witnessed those uh, mandirs, visited those villages, and, uh, the, and arrived at this conclusion that something big is going to happen to Kashmir. I try to um, convince them in a mandir. In Gan Gan Ganpatiyar is a mandir um, in Srinagar, Ganesh mandir. In that mandir, I uh, request them to, uh, I, some of them did come, and I try to uh, warn them that they are going in a danger, dangerous situation. But at that time, even in those circumstances, Kashmiri Pandas never believed that they would be killed by their own friends, by their own neighbors. They uh, were not so, they were not convinced. Um, 
Okay, finally, well, I, I will, um, because of shortage of time, uh, call some, I have to stop you. Whoever, whatever has been put out in this book, uh, in this movie, Kashmir Files, is it all true? Yes, it is true. It is true. So, so uh, it is true I, because, I, I, because, because we are all Kashmir participants. We have lost several people of our own family or our relationship. Every Kashmir Pandit you meet, you will he will tell yes, you any yes. and tales of about his own uh, relationship. You can see hey, there is no mohalla or there, there is no village or there is no town where people were not killed. Um. I, I'm I'm afraid um, uh, Kolsa will have to end here, but I am very, very thankful to you for sparing the time to, uh, you know, and and uh, I, I know that your book now only, uh, you know, with the release of this film, it only becomes more more necessary to be read. Thank you very Thank much, Kolsa. Thank you very All much. All the best. Okay. Thank you.